we theater people are very familiar with the term yes and. It is a staple for teaching improvisation, for building upon a scene with a partner. Yes and can stretch so much farther than creating a scene. It can open the doors for exploration, collaboration, and inclusion. To see that in action, I wanna tell you about Danielle, who is a dear friend, an actor, and someone I've worked with for many years. In her words, Danielle battles with cerebral palsy. She says those words make her sound like a warrior. Nine years ago, Colab came into Danielle's life. Colab is a nonprofit organization that offers individuals with developmental disabilities a creative and social outlet through theater arts. Here is Danielle telling her story. My name is Danielle Cole. I am involved with Cola. When Cola did the Alfie program at my day half, it made me say, wow, I can really do this because I only always wanted to act, but as I got older, because of my feet, impairment, I was like, I, I would be a good actor. But when Kowai came out, I was like, maybe I can do this. Yes, and Danielle did do this. Colab, which stands for Creative Opportunities Without Limits and Boundaries, not only told Danielle yes, but yes and, and she has become and now is an actor. Danielle has delivered countless punchlines that leave our audience laughing. She has played a sentimental old lady on a subway. And Danielle's performed professionally at the Queens Theater in A Midsummer Night's Dream. She is a part of our Collab Leaders Program, where she works with our youth ensemble and new actors with developmental disabilities by providing one-on-one -on -one support, leading warm-ups, and modeling theater exercises. Danielle, as she says, is still learning as she goes. But what she said in that video, quote, as I got older, because of my speech impediment, I was like, I didn't think I'd be a good actor, end quote. Danielle was told, no, you can't perform. You can't be an actor. And like Danielle, I wanted to be an actor. I got good roles in high school, and I had taken voice lessons for years. I got accepted into Syracuse University's drama program, and I was psyched to eventually be on Broadway. When I got to the program, it was intense. Hours of relearning every bone and muscle in your body in the movement classes, breathing, just breathing for hours without ever saying a word, and relearning your instincts and breaking down barriers while you're trying to deliver lines and emotion through a character. I realized acting was a lot harder than my high school plays. And like Danielle, I was told I wouldn't be a good actor. My first professor in my first class said, you're uninteresting. In private office hours with another professor, you'll never be an actor. You seek too much validation from other people. After finishing a monologue I'd been working on all semester, your accent is too Midwestern. And after I finished playing Stella in an emotional scene from Streetcar Named Desire, you need to lose weight. I didn't like that one. Now, alongside these acting classes, I was introduced to a program on Monday nights called Young Actors, where drama majors would work with people with developmental disabilities from the community and create a show. And every class would start with a dance party. Some pop music would play and folks would come in and catch up on the week. And then the final song, Summer Nights from Greece, 
people would partner up and one person would be a Danny, another person would be a Sandy, and we'd all belt out those final notes. The summer night. And we'd all be reaching our hands out wide like we were performing for a Broadway audience. And it didn't matter who was off key. It didn't matter if a boy was playing Sandy and a girl was playing Danny. And it, it didn't matter if you'd ever gotten a lead before in your life. We were all there to say yes and to the spontaneity of the moment, to the joy radiating around the classroom and to each other's choices. The contrast of the negativity and the no's in the acting classes and the positivity and yes ands of these Monday nights at Young Actors started to eat at me. As these two ideas were pulling against each other, I remember being outside the theater with a friend crying and just confessing, I just wanna use theater to help people. And I realized I could say yes and to that idea and switch my thinking. Acting could become a hobby, and this theater with people with developmental disabilities can become a career. With that spirit in mind, right after college, some theater friends and I moved to New York City and started CoLab. And as you can imagine, at the beginning, we were told no a lot. We were told no by theaters that already had an access program. We were told no by disability agencies that already had a feeder program. And we were told no by funders who just wanted us to have some more experience. So we had to say yes and to ourselves. We made a website, a logo, made up the name over margaritas, and just one funder said yes and. And with that, we create rented space and created a class with 13 people with developmental disabilities. Danielle was in our second class. And over the last 10 years, CoLab has said yes and a lot. It is a staple for how we create our ensemble and our shows. We work with actors like Danielle and actors with a range of developmental disabilities. In a CoLab class, you might see one actor communicating with a device powered with her eyes. You might see another actor running around the stage instead of ever saying a line. And you might see another actor taking center stage, singing opera after not speaking for months. The actors are told, yes, you're welcome here. And we will work with whatever you bring into the room. So frequently, they are like Danielle's story. They are told no, or worse, be quiet, or worse, Hands down, stop flapping. When we create inclusive yes and spaces, everyone is given permission to be themselves, to share creative ideas, and to collaborate with others. And that can lead to some awesome products, like a collab show. I'm gonna show you another clip. In this clip, it starts with a brightly colored block falling on a factory floor. And the workers, our ensemble of people with and without disabilities, are gonna say yes and to this new opportunity, art. What is that? Um, he's ours? <laughs> Let's call it art.
there was a lot of yes and happening. The actors created the choreography, some of the lyrics, and the character profiles. Then a writing team that created the book, music, and lyrics says yes to those ideas and then creates a full script and score that is then rehearsed and performed by our actors and the ensemble. As Danielle says, she is still learning as she goes, as am I. But we both agree that when we say yes and to new opportunities and ideas, we end up learning, creating, and celebrating ourselves and each other. Thank you, TEDx Broadway, for letting me share my story. And to those of you watching and listening, next time we hear ourselves saying no to a new idea, no to a new opportunity, or no to connecting with somebody who might be different than us, what if instead of that no, we said yes and? <laughs>